my name's Andrea. And my name is Bella. And today we're going to talk to you about pelvic floor exercises. So I'm going to talk through some anatomy with you and then Andy's going to talk to you about how to do the exercises. So this is a model of a female pelvis. And as I'm sitting in this upright position, it would be positioned like this. So you have your pubic joint at the front, which is the hard bone you feel at the front of your pelvis. And then your spine comes down into your sacrum. Under here are your two sacroiliac joints, also called the SIJ, and then that's your coccyx at the bottom. These grey bits are ligaments, and ligaments attach bone to bone. And then looking at it from here, you've got your spinal cord going down the spinal column, and then your nerves branching out either side. So, this pink area here, these are your pelvic floor muscles, and they come in two layers. You've got your superficial layer here, and then you've got another layer deeper inside. So they attach from the front of the pubic joint, and they go all the way around the back, attaching onto the pelvic side walls and the base of the spine. Looking at it externally, you have your urethra, where you pee from, the vaginal canal, this part is your perineum, and then that's your back passage. So inside the pelvis, your bladder sits at the front, your vaginal canal in the middle, and then your bowels and your back passage are tucked in at the back. So there's actually quite a lot going on in a really small space. And part of the role of the pelvic floor is to keep those internal organs up within the pelvic cavity where they should be. So now we're gonna look at it from a different angle. This angle is if someone has cut down this model and we're looking at it from this direction. So you can see your bladder and your urethra where you pee from, the uterus, and the vaginal canal, and that's your back passage. And this, these are the two layers of your pelvic floor muscles. So you can see from here that all of your three main openings pass through the pelvic floor muscles, which is why they have a role in continence of the bladder and bowel, and also sexual enjoyment. So we know where the muscles are and their role, and now Andy's gonna to talk to you about how to do the exercises correctly. The first thing I want to tell you is that you don't have to get onto the floor to do these exercises. It's just the name we give to them because of their anatomy. We hope that you will be able to do the exercises in a number of different positions. And we usually start teaching them in lying or sitting, which tend to be the easier positions. And then as your muscles get stronger, we'll progress to standing, walking and other positions. We're going to start by finding a nice, comfortable seating position. So you might be comfortable in an upright seating position, as I am at the moment, or it might be better for you and more comfortable just to lean forward, resting your forearms on your thighs. Either way, make sure you have a nice firm surface so that you can get good feedback through your pelvic floor muscles. It's really important that you keep the muscles that are surrounding your pelvic floor relaxed. So you want to make sure that your inner thigh muscles are relaxed, your bottom muscles relaxed and your tummy muscles are relaxed. So you're going to start by squeezing around the back passage as if you're trying to stop yourself passing wind and then bring that feeling forwards and upwards as if you're trying to stop yourself going for a wee. Hold for two to three seconds until you feel that muscle start to tire and you might feel a bit of flickering and then let go fully. Rest for three seconds and repeat. We want you to repeat that sequence 10 times. So we're going to try that now. So if you get in your comfortable position and work with me. So you're going to squeeze up, hold, let go fully, rest for three seconds. Squeeze up, hold, let go fully, and rest for three seconds. Repeat this 10 times. Once you are happy that you can perform a two to three second hold and you can repeat that 10 times, you know that you're ready to progress. At this point, you can add another second to the hold so that you are holding for four seconds. And once again, your aim is to complete 10 repetitions. Keep going by adding one second every time until you are able to hold for 10 seconds and repeat that 10 times. It's really important that you remember to breathe throughout. Now we know that there are two different muscle fibres within the pelvic floor and so therefore we need to do two different types of exercises. So we're now going to move on to the second type of exercise which is where you're going to squeeze quickly and release fully. So you're going to squeeze, let go, squeeze, let go, 
squeeze, let go. Join me now. Squeeze, let go. Squeeze, let go. And you're going to repeat this 10 times. You have now completed one set of pelvic floor exercises. We are going to want you to repeat this sequence three separate times in the day. We know that your pelvic floor muscles, as with any other muscle in your body, will tire as the day progresses. So it's a good idea to fit in these exercises earlier on in the day. It's really, really helpful if you have a cue or reminder in your head as to when it's convenient for you to do these exercises. So just as an example, some people like to do them before their meal or after their meal. Others like to think of taking three times when they're going to the toilet and after they finish, putting down the toilet lid, sitting on a nice firm surface for feedback and doing the exercise when they've got a couple of minutes uninterrupted time. We don't recommend that you stop and start the flow of urine because we know that that can lead to confusion of the bladder and can lead to urinary tract infections. So remember, you're going to do 10 long squeezes and 10 short squeezes three times a day. We often get asked, do I have to do these exercises for life? Well, the short answer is yes, you do. The research shows us that it takes three to six months to strengthen the muscle. And during this time, you need to commit to doing the exercises three times a day. If you do the exercises any less than this, then that won't be enough to get the muscles stronger. On the other hand, if you do the exercises too often, then the muscle will just get tired. So now I'm going to hand you back over to Bella for a few more top tips on your pelvic floor muscles. Some women say to us that they're not sure if they're doing the exercises correctly or they're using the right muscles. So there's a couple of things you can do just to ensure that you're doing it right. The first thing is you can place a clean finger or thumb just inside the entrance of the vagina and practice your exercises. If you feel a squeeze around your finger, you know you're doing it correctly. So the other thing you can do is by placing a mirror in between your legs so you can see the perineal area while you practice your exercises. If you see an upward movement or an inward draw and a squeeze around your back passage, you know you're doing them correctly. If you see a downward movement or you see this area bulging, that's actually the opposite of what we need. So if this is the case, then you can contact us and we can give you some more tips to ensure that you're doing it correctly. Some women also say that they can have a leak from their bladder with laughing, coughing, sneezing, running, jumping or bending. That's called stress incontinence and we know that it affects one in three women. If this does happen, there's a simple technique you can do to reduce your symptoms and eventually improve them. This is called the knack and all you do is pre-contract your pelvic floor, so squeeze your pelvic floor muscles before you do one of those activities. So the reason this helps is you're making sure that the pelvic floor muscles are kicking in exactly when they should, so they're squeezing around the opening of the bladder. If you remember to squeeze before you sneeze, this should help to reduce your symptoms. So in this video, we've covered pelvic floor exercises. We've shown you where the muscles are and how to do the exercises correctly and given you some tips to make it easier for you. There will now be some useful links that you can access and we hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.